We are they that draw near to God. Amen? We must, we must draw near. We must draw near to God. Hallelujah. I remember where Moses drew on, trying to draw near to that bush where God was, where the presence of God was. And God said to Moses, no, 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 no. no. Get your shoes off, Moses. You're standing on holy ground. You're not just going to come run into God in your flesh. No flesh will glory in his presence. Just because his voice is calling you doesn't mean he's accepting your flesh or he accepts you in your fallen state. No, you gotta, you've got to be redeemed. You've got to give up yourself for him. You've got to deny yourself. And you do that through obedience God told Moses, take your shoes off. What's God telling you to do? What has the Lord said to you lately? That's your cross. Hearing his voice, obeying his voice, that's the cross. That's the cross, people. It's not a piece of wood. It's not a tree. That was the physical instrument that was used, but it's the voice of God. It's the will of God. That's the cross. I just recently heard in the news that the Muslims in the United States, ISIS, is actually saying we're going to kill all those in the United States that embrace the cross. That's a spirit, people. For them to say that, they embrace the cross. What are they, who are they talking? What, what is that voice that's saying that? It's not human. That's not flesh and blood. Who is it that's the enemy of the cross? Who, who is it that loves to keep Jesus on a cross? Keep him dead in the minds of the people. Satan. When you hear things like that where Muslims are coming right out and you see it broadcasting in the news where they're saying those that embrace the cross. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? They're doing everything they can to destroy anything that has to do with Jesus Christ. Anything that has to do with morality. Anything that has to do with holiness. Anything that has to do with rightness. Because they're barbaric. They're evil. They're wicked. They're brute beasts. They're, they're vile. They're vile. I don't think there's any any more vile people on the earth than these radical Muslims are so vile. Hey, listen, they're so unclean and vile, you can smell it. I've been around some of these and they're so they're so vile you can smell. That's how vile they are. They don't clean themselves. You and I wipe ourselves, they don't wipe themselves. They're vile. They're wicked. They're filthy. They're disgusting. They're animals. And they're taking over the world. Taking over the world. At least in India, they wash themselves with water on their bottom. They don't use toilet paper, but they use water. It used to be before we had toilet paper, they used a stick. That's right. Use the stick. That's what that term is. Don't get the wrong end of the stick. Because they kept a stick in the outhouse. And you hand the stick to somebody and you get the wrong end. Obviously the one that's handing you the stick doesn't have that other end. So what, hand, what end are you getting? You're getting the end the devil wants you to have. You're getting the raw end of the deal. But Jesus, in his mercy and his grace, took a hold of the other end. The dirty end, the filthy end. And he hands you and I the clean end. He became sin. He took upon him the sin of the world. So that you and I could be made the righteousness of God. He took my sin away. He took my sin away. 
And he keeps me singing every day, hallelujah. He took my sin away, he took my sin away, he took my sin away. He took my sin away, he took my sin away, and he keeps me singing every day, hallelujah. Oh, I'm so glad he took my sin away, he took my sin away. Listen, you're not going to heaven with sin in your life. You're not going to heaven with self-righteousness. You're not going to heaven with filthy rags for righteousness. No, you got to have your filthy rags washed. You got to be made clean. You got to be made holy. God is saying, give me your filthy rags and I will give you a new garment. I'll give you white robe. I'll give you a clean robe for your old tattered garments, for your rags. I'll take you from rags to riches, folks. And that's what Jesus does that's what he wants to do through through the cross, through Calvary. That's what he does. He takes away our sin. He takes away those old filthy garments. And he gives us a new robes, uh, robes of white. I looked up that word, ro- uh, that word white in the original Greek and it means light. I'm not talking about a robe that's physical robe. It's talking about white. It's talking about light. He wants to make us like himself, light. You know, you turn the light on in the room and you get the light bulb goes on. That's light. That's what we call light. What about light from the sun? That's another type of light. But what about the light that comes from heaven? The light that's unapproachable. God wants to make you and I light. Like himself. The world today is darkness. He wants to give us light for darkness. He wants to transform us. He wants to change us. And this is no time to be drawing back this is no time to be apostasy to be walking away jesus said to his own disciples to up to peter and to james and john he said to all of them he says will you also go away are you also going to leave me that's where we are that's the hour we are in and i can say just like jesus said i'm not alone though all forsake me i'm not alone because And I can't say that in myself. I do always those things that please the Father. But that's my heart. That's my desire. I know I fall short. I know I don't always do those things that please the Father. I can't say that like Jesus. But with his voice and with his faith and with his strength, I can say those words because it's not me. It's his grace. It's his truth. It's his righteousness. Not one of us is going to get to heaven and say, look what I did. Not one of us is going to get to heaven and say, look what I did. No, you're going to, when you get over there, it's all glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He saved you. He got you there. There's no pride. There's no boasting. Nobody's going to boast and say, look what I did. And someone that has self-righteousness and looks down on other people that are not right or doing right with God and not serving the Lord, that's self-righteous. That's pride. Paul the Apostle said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, I'm the chiefest of sinners. He said, I was the chief. Not that Paul was saying, I am still the chief of sinners. What he was saying was, I recognize how bad I was. He said, I persecuted the church. He says, I was bad. He says, I don't even deserve to be an apostle. He says, I am what I am by the grace of God. There's no boasting. Paul said, if I don't preach the gospel, he said, woe is me. Paul did not preach for any other reason because he knew that if he didn't preach, he was not any better off than those that he would be preaching to. You have to obey God. You got to do God's will. You can't do your own will and go to heaven. You can't do your own thing. You can't go your own way. You can't fulfill your own desires. That's what Adam and Eve did. They did their own thing. That's why we're in the mess we're in today. Disobedience. What would happen if every child on the earth disobeyed their parents? What kind of a world would we be living in? And that's the way it's getting. The scripture says that 
that that's exactly what it's going to happen. Children will be disobedient to their parents, unthankful, unruly. And we're there. We're watching little children just with arrogance and think they're going to tell mama and daddy what to do. That's what happens when sin comes. Little children ruling over their parents and women ruling over their husbands. That's the curse that comes upon the world when, when God's blessing is not on his people and up, not upon. God only puts his blessing on the obedient, those that obey him, those that follow him, those that do what his word says to do. And if you don't obey the Lord, you're not going to have the blessing of God. You're not going to live in a blessed state. No, you're going to be under the curse and you're not going to be happy. You're going to you're going to be sad all the time and you you're going to you folks listen, you're you're going to you're going to have sorrow. But God wants to you to give him. He wants you to give him your sorrow and he will give you joy in exchange for your sorrow. He wants you to give him your tears and he will give you gladness. There's an exchange that Jesus Christ wants to do with you. And you keep on saying to Jesus, "No, I think I'll keep my my rags. If if a millionaire asked just offered you anything you ever wanted, would you say no to them? And yet we turn our noses up to Jesus Christ. No higher royalty. The Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, with no limits. No limits to his what he can do. No limits to his riches. There's limitations in this world. Billionaires are, are limited. They're not unlimited. In God's kingdom, Jesus Christ is unlimited. There's nothing he cannot do. And we turn our nose up to him. And he offers us everything. He says, I'll give you everything. He said, you'll be my son. And he said, I'll give it all to you as an inheritance because when you're born again and you come into the family of God when Jesus died on that cross there has to be a death to the testator of the will the will is no good until there's a death to the testator Jesus didn't go to the cross just to die so our sins would be washed away he died so that you and I could be thank God heirs so that we could receive the inheritance, the full inheritance. There had to be a death so that the will of God, you and I could be recipients of God's will, people. The will of God. If you knew of someone in your family that was very wealthy and you know they were getting ready to die and they were going to leave you something, they are going to leave you some wealth, people fight over that in this world they fight over it. but where are those in this hour that are fighting over the inheritance that Jesus Christ gives us through his uh through the cross through his death you say brother joseph what is that inheritance on the day of pentecost there came a sound of a rushing mighty wind and filled all the house where they were sitting and they were filled with the holy ghost and they were changed and they were transformed the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. Folks, it's joy, it's peace, it's righteousness in the Holy Ghost. And we just, people turn their nose up to it. But if you ask that same person, hey, how would you like to have a million dollars? Oh, yeah, you're there, your best friend. You get somebody that lays their life down for you. Somebody that will do anything for you. Jesus Christ died for you. Jesus Christ went to the cross for you. And we're loyal. We show our loyalty to people that are good to us. People that have done things for us. And What about Jesus? I remember I was standing or kneeling. I got to the point where I was kneeling in front of my wife's grandfather's casket. And I knew that he was a military man. And I was paying my respects and honor and the Lord spoke to me and he said I died I died how much honor do you give me and I feel like that's what we're doing we don't give God any honor we don't give God any any reverence we just look at what Jesus did and we just say ah that's no big deal 
It is a big deal.